so I had the idea to put some flower boxes up that looked at the old house. It's like a Queen Anne style or shingle style house. And the upper window there looks kind of plain. We have no curtains in there. We like to let the light in. So I just decided that we'll put some window boxes up to make it look a little more interesting. So I want to make an old timey looking window box to fit the house. It was built in 1909. So I came up with this idea of using cedar wood with a steel band. They used to use steel bands for things like strong boxes, barrels, and other things to strengthen them. I found out right away that not only do the boxes look great outside, but when you're inside, you see these little happy flowers smiling back at you in the morning. So the box itself has uh, one, two, three, four, five, or six sides. No, only five, actually. Two sides, a bottom, and two ends. That's all there is. Cut the, uh, the sides and the bottom the same length. And you cut these little end pieces and stick them in. Decided to use a butt joint for this because the uh, end grain is not very strong for gluing. I did use a miter joint on the uh, crown moldings you'll see in just a minute. But anyway, you assemble this stuff, and I use glue on everything. It's an exterior uh, wood glue that's for uh, this type of work. And then uh, clamp everything up and then put screws in it to hold it all down. And I, you should pre-drill this particular kind of wood. You need to drill, drill small pilot holes so you don't split the wood. If you run a screw in there without building a pilot hole, it will split, especially on the end grain once again. So you screw this thing all together. And there's a picture of one of the screws. It's called the finished screw. It's got a very tiny head on it. And they go right in, and they hold very tight. These are the steel straps, and they are available at any lumber yard. These are made by Simpson Strong Tie. And I screwed those in place. And uh, you see the little hole at the end there? You'll see how those are become the way we hang this thing. So anyway, uh, I decided I needed to recess these straps for the reason that uh, that top molding piece, if you didn't recess it, it would stick out and you'd have a problem there. So I'm going to recess these st steel bands using a router to make a small groove or mortise and then uh, cleaning it with a chisel and a utility knife. So uh, these little half-inch screws, they, they're with large heads. They look From a distance, they look like rivets, kind of like an old-timey again, sort of a medieval-looking uh, construction type, let's say. At any rate, these things wrap completely around, and then the uh, loop over the top. And then to get the, the screws inside the box, you'll need a stubby screwdriver like that one shown. And then when you're done, flip them all over, and you're going to have to put three weep holes in the bottoms of each one for the water to drain out. Uh, for any flower box, you don't want the whole water, it'll, it'll get stagnated and so forth and kill the plant. To do that, you drill through, and I usually drill through halfway and then flip the piece over and, and then drill through the rest of the way using a pilot hole. Okay, because when you drill through, it'll poke out the other side and it'll split the wood a lot of times. So drilling in doesn't, drilling through and punching through does. So I use the belt sander to even everything up and then a smaller orbital sander to smooth it out. There's one of the butt joints. You can barely see it. And now, now to put on these pieces of uh, what I call crown molding, and I'm making my own because I didn't have what they didn't have this in cedar where I was shopping for the wood. So I'm going to create some out of an extra plank that I got uh, for that reason. So to do that, use a router, and you set the router in several different. You're going to want to do it in several different cuts. I just use a chalk box or a chalk line to make a straight line there. And then I run the router down it several times, again, lowering the blade each time, so you take it off a little at a time. And then you rip it, and I use a rip, uh, this Milwaukee uh, circular saw. And when you set the blade, don't set it all the way down. Just set it barely enough to cut through the wood. If you set it all the way down, you're going to have all this blade drag, and you won't be able to control it for a good straight cut. So rip, ripping the wood, and again, clamping it in place, working by myself, this is a good way to do it, because you can, you know... Uh, route it, and then rip a piece off, route the other end, rip it off, and then you're, you're able not having to work with a real little skinny piece of wood. So there's the boxes with the steel bands on them. We're ready to go with some a little more touch-up work. Uh, this is white vinegar. When you have galvanized steel like these bands, uh, my dad told me years ago when he was a painter that the white vinegar will make it so the paint sticks to the galvanized, the zinc neutralizes somehow. You said the old guys would pee in a paint pot if they didn't have vinegar, and, the, and they would paint the urine on there to do the same thing. So I, I, this is not urine. So I mashed those things up, masking tape, painted them up. should paint that steel before you go on applying it. I didn't do that. I should have. But anyway, there it is with the paint on it. And uh, I'm putting the trim pieces on. 
This molding, again, with the end grain, if you look at that piece of wood there, remember the old, uh, in the grade school, you'd take a piece of celery and stick it in a, in a cup of red dye, a red cake coloring, and you'd see the red go up the, up the grain. Well, this is what end grain does. That's why you have to kind of be conscious of when you're working with wood like this. Keep the end grain away from where it's going to be wet. In this case, it's on the outside, not the inside where the water uh, and the plants and the dirt is going to be up against it all the time. That's why I decided with a butt joint. Also, on the corners, it doesn't hold as well. When you try to glue end grain to end grain for a miter joint, it just tries to soak in like the water, and it just doesn't hold very well. So you sand them up smooth, get, use a tack cloth to dust off the dust, and doing this outside is not a, a good idea because of pollen, dust, and other things blowing around in the air. So when you go to finish these, get them in a uh, confined space that is, obviously you don't want to breathe too much of this stuff, but you don't want any air moving. You don't want any dust, dust-free uh, environment, no air moving, because that stuff will mess up your finish. So then what I decided to do was put a rubber coating on the inside of here using this rubber spray stuff that uh, I think Rust-Oleum makes this. This is like the thing, the guy on TV with the, the motorboat with the aluminum, he cuts a big hole in the bottom, puts a screen door on it, sprays his rubber on it, and it takes off. So it's supposed to be pretty good. I'm going to try it. So anyway, I rubber coated the interior. And then uh, I put one up in the window to see how it would fit and realized that I'm going to need a standoff. See there where it's up against the house, at, it, there's a lip that sticks out the, the windowsill, okay? So I had to make a, a standoff, the width of that windowsill, to keep the bo bottom of the box flush and plumb out even with the edge of the sill. So what you can do with your plants is you can lay them out on a, on a saw buck like I did there and get your idea how you want to situate them in the box first. Then you'll want to crock the pot. That's something my mother used to say when they had flower pots were made out of uh, clay, red clay, and they would always be broken and ones laying around. And you'd put those broken pieces of pot over the holes to keep the uh, holes from clogging. Then over that, I put a piece of this landscaper's uh, cloth over the rocks again, and then on top of that, the dirt. So you don't have these holes clogging up on you. And they're only half-inch holes, so by putting the rocks and the cloth over it, you're going to have a lot better uh, movement of water through that and, and less clogging. So the plants are in, and then up on the windows, they just hang on two hooks. But these hooks, I've, I've kind of cut down to size and then bent them just so, so they'll fit in those hangers. And then I also use a elastometric caulk to keep the water from getting into the round of steel. And once you cut those off, you have a sharp edge. You use a file to, to round it off so nobody gets cut on that. So anyway, you got these two little hooks, small as necessary, to hold the box. So there, there, there they are again. You paint them too because they will rust. There it is, hanging on the two holes from the bands on the two little hooks. And these will come off anytime you want to take them off. So there's a way to improve an already pretty nice view by putting these little window boxes in there. So I think these are going to work out fine. And uh, as mentioned, they look good on the outside and on the inside. So. Uh, Good luck with uh, building one yourself, and I hope you have uh, good success, and, and most of all, enjoy working with your hands in the wood. All the best, and take care. Thanks for watching.